guys, it's Floss. Welcome back to another Floss Tube video. In today's video, I will be showing you what I've been up to for the month of August and September. If that's what you're interested in, then make sure you grab a beverage of choice and your stitching project. And let's go because it's going to be a very long video. Today it's 2nd of October and I've been away from doing cross stitch update videos for about 8 weeks exactly. Well, a lot has happened and I will put the life update somewhat towards the end. I have put up a post in YouTube community asking people what they want because I just knew this was going to be a very long video, possibly more than an hour. And I was asking whether people wanted to separate the life update from the cross stitching update. But mm, there's more, well, there were more people saying like just put it all in one. So as usual, I will do different chapters and if you don't want certain chapters or certain sections, you can just skip, okay? And also in this video, there's gonna be a lot of holes and that means there will be a lot of links. And maybe sometimes I will not remember what the shop's names are. In that case, I will put it all in the description box. So if you have any problems, just check there. I will try to include as much information as I can or post-editing I might put this name you know on the screen what else and also if I seem pausing a bit more than before it's because I've watched one of Sharon from Magnolia Nana <laughs> that's her uh, YouTube channel so in one of her videos she accidentally said one um and she kind of beat it herself up for it and that made me think maybe I should try to control my um because if you've watched my previous videos I, s I just say that a lot so I just want to take it slow and I guess avoid saying um as much as I can even though I know I'm gonna say it so I've said I have purchased a lot of things and if you remember from my previous video I said I was in the negative because I purchased the quantum frame stretcher bars. I'm pretty sure it was $83.60 in the negative before and that was in September? No, that was in August or something? Anyway, so now it's in October, I am finally $16.04 positive in my hobby budget. So all these haul items I'm going to show you will not be, were not from my hobby budget and I will explain to you why. So. If you have watched my previous video, which would have been a pip and chip floss chip organization system first impression video, yes, I did purchase the whole lot and it's pretty much a birthday present from my parents. So I am turning 30 this month in maybe three weeks-ish. And um, I think in any culture, especially in Chinese culture, turning 30 is a big thing and we even have a phrase for it. So my parents were pretty bummed out that they couldn't be here with me and celebrate it. And instead, they gave me and JP uh, some money. And we decided to use a bit of this money to buy whatever we otherwise would not have bought. And 
that brought the floss chip organization system. And obviously I made a whole video about it. So if you're interested, go check it out. It's cool to have, but I don't know whether it's absolutely necessary. If you're happy with your current organization system, just stick to it. Especially if you prefer like bobinated um, system. So, because that whole system caused a lot of shipping from UK, I thought since I'm probably just going to make one purchase, I might as well make use of the purchase. So aside from just the floss chip, the whole set, I also bought a couple more things. I bought this. Sloth wooden needle minders. So this bit is wood, it's all, I think, laser cut. And on the back, instead of just like a normal wood chip, it also has this pip and chip logo thingy, which is quite cool. It is a pretty big needle minder actually. And I haven't used it, so I don't know how, how strong it is. Oh, it's on the stronger side. So that's pretty good. I will use it, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure with, so I don't really have a product, product. I don't really have a project in mind, but I'm sure I'm gonna use it. And at the same time, I purchased this Krennic tin. Right now I don't have any Krennics because I haven't started anything that requires clinics. But I know in my stash I have quite a few charts that will require some and I am hoping to buy some charts with clinics as well. Let me rephrase this. I didn't want to buy those charts because of they had clinics. I wanted them and they happened to have clinics. And so I know I'm going to utilize this tin in the future quite well. Did I show you? I don't know. So they just have this foam bit where the spools can sit in and they just stand. And if you position them in a way where the label labels can be shown, then you know it's very easy to find them. Put it away. Okay. Then I have decided to. Actually, I didn't decide it. What happened was JP finally met the girl who designed our channel logos. If you have paid particular attention to the logos on our thumbnails. With my videos, there will be like a girl video, a video, a girl logo on either corner. And with JP's videos, there will be like a guy logo somewhere. And if it's got both of us in it, it will have like a heart shaped logo with both of us in there. So the girl that designed the logos saw JP one day because JP did Wushu, so martial arts, and I think they just got talking and JP just sort of asked her, oh, how would you feel if, you know, Floz made some kind of cross stitch for your bunnies? And she got really excited. So then JP told me that. And I thought, oh, it would be nice to cross stitch the bunnies for her or some kind of charts with bunnies that resemble her bunnies for her. So then I bought this chart and I will probably put the preview here. So 
that was an Etsy chart and it was I think like five bucks or something I think it was on special I can't quite remember I bought it possibly in August at some point and because it's a gift and partially JP caused it so to kit it up everything I spent on that project was from JP's PayPal credit from him writing articles for Goonhammer for Kings of War. That's why it's not from my hobby budget. And just to kit that up, I bought this blue sky hand dyed fabric. It's from Paddock Lane Design. I don't think it's going to show the different models, models of blue. Oh, it shows, maybe it shows a little bit. So it's just like a pale blue hand dyed fabric. It's 16 count. And it seems like it's quite sheer. Yeah, it's just a pretty blue. I was kind of debating between this blue and this like a pale lilac one. But then I thought oh, I would just go for the safe option because the lilac might overlap with some of the flower colors. I'm not quite sure. But because it's a gift, I didn't want to just be... Too creative with it just in case it didn't work. Oh, this lighting. So I purchased this hand dyed fabric and it's a fat quarter. And I put, well, I completely kit it up. So I didn't have all the threads that the project would require. I had to buy maybe half of the colors, so like 12 colors or something and the rings purchased later anyway so the thread what else do i buy that's it yeah so that's that project and you know what this lighting is really pissing me off i'm going to try to drag that blind down just give me a minute Okay, the blind is down. I think it's better, even though it creates more shadows now because there's not as much natural sunlight. But I was so sick of looking down at my notes and everything went dark. And then when I, you know, lifted my head up, everything was bright again. This whole like, ugh, it's too much. And after kidding up that project, I was thinking maybe I needed to buy some project bags for the future because I do have this plan of starting more things and I'll tell you later in the plan section. So I purchased two very very well made project bags from the Basic Llama on Etsy. She's from Sydney she just makes project bags as like a side business. So I got this girl power one. I don't remember the size. It might be 12 by 12. I'll just do post editing, give you the information and all that, you know. Girl power. And that cute llama or little lamb. Zipper pull, vinyl front, and this whale kind of ocean themed one. It's a set. This might be 12 by 15. I'm just 
saying out of my butt right now with this tassel and a pearl looking zipper pull and I said it's a set because this one is a thread book for your oughts and it's that felt material that uh, threads really stick to so if you are on the go and you have those random bits of thread you just put them on there and they won't make a mess Her project bags compared to some of the other options on Etsy for Australian sellers are on the slightly pricier side but they are very very well made and her fabrics are stunning she doesn't really have many options at the same time there tends to be maybe just six things six to eight things but apparently she does take custom orders I don't know whether you can check with her what kind of fabrics she has but I'm pretty sure I know someone who sent her fabrics from you know the the buyers stash or the buyers just bought fabrics and sent it to ba the basic llama herself and um, she just takes orders like how many you want out of this bolt or whatever and what kind of dimensions so yeah she does that if you're interested then go check her out coming with the order there's also this cute llama logo and some stickers I think if you do card is it paper craft or some people do like the diary is it I, I mean I don't know any other crafts very well aside from cross stitch but I know some people really like to do journaling if that's your thing I think you'll find these stickers very handy so that's my two very very pretty Kurtek bags that I'm really looking forward to using in the future and I also bought some hand dyed fabrics so all of these are from Paul Stitches Designs and you might be hearing a lot of crinkling noises in the next few minutes just bear with me I've got oh and all of these are 28 count even weaves I'm pretty sure this one is Coastal Sky it's blue with a bit of lilac it's a bit on the vibrant side and what you're seeing is pretty much what the fabric looks like I'm sorry I really don't want to open it then I have to struggle putting it back in but yeah it's very pretty and this one is raindrops it's almost like crystal sky but slightly more subtle and on the greener side and I've also got my very first opalescent fabric this one is called smoky amethyst and it's a purple purple fabric with random light spots and this greenish shiny opalescence I don't really know what I'm going to use them for but I do have some fairies some fairies charts I'm sure I'm going to use them and Together with these three fabrics, I also bought the 32 count white Belfast linen. I bought one meter by 1.4. And this is going to be for my mermaid box from Chatelaine as my birthday start later. I haven't received that big purchase to kit up everything yet. 
but hopefully I'm gonna receive it around my birthday or just before fingers crossed but this is the fabric for that this is plenty of fabric I think what they recommended was maybe 70 centimeters by one meter or something like that but yeah this is plenty so that should be enough excess fabric for me to finish the whole thing off and with that I bought the ring that I used to hold this bunny project so that's a one and a half yeah I think that's one and half inch ring and this is a three inch ring maybe and some needles I've got the John James tapestry petite gold needles and some just generic no brand gold needles so the John James were size 26 I think the gold one yeah the gold ones are size 26 as well is that enough haul for you? I think that's the end. Actually, I lied. There's one more. I didn't really purchase it, but I went to the September Stitches meetup and there was a lady that brought a whole huge bag of things for people to look through and pick out if they feel like it. So I just got this coaster. <laughs> And it's got, it's like a kit. Threads, the coaster, fabric. Just a small project that I can try on the side. Because, yeah, I just want to give it a go. I've never made a post, poster, coaster before. And I don't have many small projects. So, that was nice of her. So I guess that is part of the haul and yes that's my haul normally it doesn't take this long to do a haul because I don't tend to buy a lot of things but because yeah my birthday is coming and I got this gifted money I just went a bit crazy really from my standard and then I can show you some projects well, as I said before, I was pretty much planning to focus on wedding sampler to get it done before the wedding. And spoiler alert, I didn't get it done, but I will talk more about it later. And normally when I show you the progress on my projects, I give you all the facts, how many days I've worked on each thing and how many hours of stitching I did to give that much progress and for a month these are the days I haven't stitched blah 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 because I have to cover two months I'm not gonna do that well so I'll just show you or tell you how many days I stitched on each thing and do a bit of an overview and that's it so these two months I stitched four things and technically it's just two things, two projects. The other two just got one day, not even one day. So I will show the ones that didn't really get much progress first. Now, the first one I'm gonna show you is, Victorian Elegance. You must be so sick of seeing this because it's been like 20 years since I started it but it's still not done and this time I only worked on it for one day again what did I say for 35 minutes so right now this project is the bane of my existence it's so pretty but it's such a pain in the bum with the ribbon embroidery And I, I'll i see whether there's a need to show you what it looked like before the 35 minutes. But I pretty much 
finished maybe this bit, the purple ribbon, and went with a bit of this, what, what do they say, like cream ribbon to create these almost like lazy daisy looking things. And I remember trying to cook for JP's birthday at the same time trying to stitch a bit of this and eventually getting really frustrated and just chucked it aside. And that's pretty much how I deal with this project nowadays. I want to work on it, I look at it, I garner my courage to work on it and half an hour later I'm so frustrated I just I can't deal with it anymore. So next time I pick it up I'm going to continue working on this hopefully get it done and we'll see what happens. And also with this one uh, the ribbon embroidery is not the only thing I haven't finished there's also a lot of beading but I just wanted to get the <laughs> ribbon embroidery done first. Or maybe I should do some beading I don't quite nor yet. We'll see. And then the next project I did one day on was coffee break. And where am I? So this one is a kit as well. Oh, I didn't really, sorry. I mean, it's been two months ish. I really don't remember how to do things properly. So the Victorian Elegance was a kit and everything was from the kit. This one is done on 28 count even weave, mushroom even weave. And the fabric's quite nice. And the kit is <laughs> Dimensions Gold Collection. My one was the American, the US print. Nowadays, you should still be able to buy it. It's just the Chinese print with the organizers, the thread on the organizers, you know what I mean. And the next thing is Design Works. It's a kit as well. This one is done on 14 count white Ada, and I'm using everything from the kit as well. The finished product should be... 12 inch by 16 inch. So I actually brought this to the September stitching meetup because I just can't bear working on a wedding sampler again. I felt like I was gonna vomit. <laughs> I was so sick of it. But I was, oh sorry, it's just dog hair. I was literally just working that bit. Because last time when you saw it, the three coffee motifs were finished. And Laura from the meetup was saying like, she wanted to just peel all these things off because it's really annoying her and I don't really care. Pretty much the little, little start on, what's this coffee? Cafe au lait? I don't know what that means. In Australia, we don't have that. Hopefully next time when I can start on this again, hopefully this month, I don't know, I will finish this coffee. Okay. And for coffee break, I did about two hours during the meetup. That's it. It wasn't a lot of stitching for two hours, was it? And then I'll show you Spring Will Come and I'll put a preview here because it's a PDF chart from Artisy. So it's charted by Artisy, but the artist is Vetus. And I have to say the preview doesn't do the project justice because everything looks quite dim, especially the sky, it looked almost black. Whereas, what I'm stitching right now is blue and purplish blue. So it's a lot more vibrant, which suited the original design that the designer created. 
Um, I worked on Spring Will Come for 14 days and almost half of it was the first week of August when like just before I made the video the whole week I was working on this because I was getting obsessed and what else did I write and then I was just working on this here and there when I was getting really sick of the wedding song club because I was really forcing myself to, to do it and then I felt justified working on it on or around the mid-autumn festival which was all about reunion and how beautiful the moon was and I was working on the moon so that was really nice and uh, I'll show you where I'm up to oh my god so that's my progress I might have to get you closer because I worked more on the moon and the moon is cream colour so you might not be able to see very well otherwise I might have worked on more like this direction too but yeah it's mainly on the moon and there's a, a lot of blocky colours I think does it show the blue? Oh, I guess it quite doesn't quite show it, hey? But yeah, in real life, it's a lot more blue, not this dark. And if you can hear some random noise of people talking, that's JP upstairs doing a Wushu committee meeting for half an hour or something. He said he he didn't want to disturb me making a video so I didn't have to stop doing this one when he's on the meeting but if you can hear it that's what it was so yeah I'm obsessed with this and um, being so organized as I am I didn't actually give you or didn't write down the percentage and all that but I can find out This one. I think I'm at 8 point something percent. Can you work? Oh. Sorry, my cup RXP just crashed on me. So spring will come, the stitch count is 300 by 211, I think. And Right now, I have done 5,784 stitches out of 66,000. Yes. So the total stitches here is wrong because it takes into account some of the overlapping areas. So the actual percentage should be more than this. Probably 8.6% or something. Can't wait to get back into this one. Mm, where is my notes? Okay. Oh, well, I forgot to mention this. Here, my notes said the second week of August recording might be very inaccurate because. So the first week of August, JP caught someone's bug. It's like a virus. So he got a flu. And then I was just waiting for the disaster to happen because I knew I was going to get infected as well. And it happened. It happened on second week, during second week of August. And I got quite sick. So even though I stayed at home for three days, I didn't stitch that much, but then the whole recording was possibly wrong because I felt really exhausted and hazy. The memory was kind of, you know. And I think it took me maybe 
two, three weeks, three weeks to fully recover because I still had a little bit of cough and it took JP ages to get over the cough. And it seems like these days when people get sick, the whole sickness periods are just so long because we're not used to getting sick anymore with masks wearing and whatnot, you know? And I also wrote for the whole eight weeks, there were 16 days out of 61 days with no stitching. And there were quite a few weekends in there because these two months, our weekends were hectic. And the weekday stitching became a bit shorter than before. And I'll tell you why later in the, in the life updates. So yeah. So I guess what I'm getting at is with the days of stitching I did, I could have got a bit more progress if I could control it, but yeah, there's not as much progress. That's what I'm getting at. And I, I will show you wedding sampler now. This is a project that's supposed to be done by now, but not. It's by Teresa Wensler. It's a very intricate design and I'm doing it as a gift for my friend's wedding that's happening literally in a week. Actually, less than a week. It's next Saturday, 8th of October. So yeah, it's not done. <sighs> Anyways. And I, did I say I worked on it for 33 days? I can't remember. And there were a few days I didn't completely focus on this. I went and stitched like some of the other things for a little bit. And um, yeah, I came back to this towards the end of the night. And this is where I'm off to. So if I show you the side by side, I mean, it is two months. You would see there's a lot that has been done. That's fair. So aside from beading, um, hmm. this, this, this is all done. I've got the last horizontal band is it left to complete for the satin stitches with the satin threads and the back stitching here as well and obviously the wording what else yeah then just beading tons and tons and tons and tons of beading and before you criticize me of making lots of mistakes yes i did make a lot of mistakes and i will not go into details here i think once it's done i will make a proper video of telling you the bits and bobs of this design just rest assured i have learned so much from this but as you can see, to separate this, I guess this work and um, doing the satin stitches and all, I was trying to do some words here. So the words are done one over one. I've never done one over one on linen before. I don't think. Hmm. Might have done a little bit, but not like this crossing and all. Yeah, it was it, it was not a lot of fun, but it's bearable and the end result's quite delicate. It's quite nice. Well, I was hoping to get at least this line done, which would have said united in love and different um 
from this that says united in matrimony or something but yeah i was hoping to get this done yesterday but i was feeling quite ill so i ended up going to bed really early without having much sleep but that's another thing so because with the wording you can write whatever you want they just give you each letter's chart i had to sort of plot it oh jeez i have to plot it a little bit so this is the plot and i'm just using this like gridded paper try to calculate how to make sure the words will be in the middle of the chart it's quite it's quite a lot of planning and my friends actually got really long names because she's Vietnamese and Vietnamese have many names and I had to ask her which names I could include because the full name was too long and I could only select two of them and yeah it was a lot of planning uh, what else do I want to say That's pretty much it. Oh yeah, here I just said I don't get as much time to stitch as the previous months because weekends are busier and uh, we don't stay as we don't stay up as late as before anymore. Before we would stay up possibly 12, 12 30 and go to bed after that, sometimes at like one o'clock. But now we have to be sleeping before 12 so new life patterns and that's all the stitching update progress whatever you want to call it and now I'm going to talk about plans I have a lot of plans actually so if you remember I stitched the napping kittens before from dimensions gold petite and I stitched that with Bernadette from Burn Stitches. And to be honest, then I just forgot about it. I didn't even remember to, you know, initial it. And well, people put dates on it, but I just put the year when the project was finished. I hadn't, I haven't done that on Napping Kitten yet. Well, the other day I was sort of browsing on Instagram. And by the way, I'm on Instagram a bit more often than last year. And if you want to follow me, the handle is. Some of the things I mentioned, progress and all that, would have been on Instagram already, especially hauls and stuff. So if you follow me, you would have seen that already. Anyway, so... I was scrolling on Instagram and there's this, I guess she used to make videos and she's in Perth, I think. Her channel name might've been Caroline something with those. I will put it here, but on Instagram, she's called Carolyn Sullivan. She has a very artistic signature on her finished projects. And before, when I finished, I would just kind of cross-stitch on letters that are just very blocky. I'm hoping to design some kind of artistic cross-stitching signature as well. So once I figure that out, I can embroider that on the napping kitten and fully finish it and wash it and all that. But the napping kitten is supposed to be a Christmas present for my sister-in-law who is disabled but from what she told us before she used to have kittens and she loves kitties and I'm hoping to frame it myself before Christmas I bought this Ikea photo frame in pink and I don't think I'll get a mad board it is quite thin so I'm hoping it would fit. But yeah, I want to try framing it myself. If I can get this. So 
some shuffling, right? It will pretty much look like this. I think it will look quite cute. And she's actually quite girly. She likes colors. So I think she will appreciate the pink. I think it looks quite nice. So I'm hoping to complete that before Christmas so she can have it as her Christmas present. And ooh. and obviously wedding sampler won't be finished in time. And I've already told my friend that. And she's okay with it because she will be having a second wedding in Vietnam in Jan next year. And she was saying as long as it's finished before that, she's happy. So technically I still have quite a lot of time. But I think I should be able to finish it this month, hopefully, in October. Finish it and then get it framed. So yeah, there should be enough time before I can gift it to her before she flies to Vienna. I think she... Maybe she's leaving in Jen and her wedding is about... It's around the Chinese New Year time, sort of towards the end of... Jen, and I'm not going there. So hopefully she'll have a very amazing wedding there too. And speaking of the wedding, I'll just talk a little bit. It's going to be a boat wedding, and I'm I like I actually have seasickness, so I'm quite worried. But I'll just see what happens. And. Then I also want to finish Victorian Elegance. I don't know whether it's going to be this year, but I want to kind of push myself a little because I have been stuck with this project for possibly longer than one and a half years, and that's long enough. I just, I don't want to be looking at it half finished for the next six months or something. So I want to get it done, get it framed, Get it hung up and then you'll be able to appreciate its beauty in the background. Yeah, somewhere there or there, that would be amazing. So I will try to push myself to finish it soon. And yes, I need to start on the bunnies. So the girls' bunnies are actually not old, but they're not young bunnies. So I want to finish the project before they go, you know what I mean? So I need to start getting a move on for that project. And I, I am quite excited to stitch it because it's, like what I said, an Etsy store. It's a chart from an Etsy store and the store is called Light Unicorn Designs, possibly? And I tend to be quite excited to try new designers and her way of charting is quite different because instead of starting it from zero, from, you know, the left side, left hand corner, her zero is in the middle of the project. So that's her zero and everything else. So zero, 10, 20, 30, like that. And I don't know whether it's, user-friendly in that way but I'll give it a go and technically the way she charted is a full coverage project but you have the option of not stitching the background which is just white or blanc anyways and I'm not gonna stitch that so the actual count of the thing is possibly 200 something by 200 something I'll give you all the details in the description box um, what else? So yeah, I think because it's quite large, it's going to take me a while anyways with my speed of stitching. So I really want to get it started so I can finish it quicker. And after it's done, I want to finish it in a hoop because that's how it's displayed on the website and it looks really cute. And I want to try doing it myself with like a fabric. Um, I 
like on the on, on the back and then the person who's going to receive it can hang it up and display it that would be really really nice and well, the next thing the next plan i want to actually ask some help for because i'm actually searching for a cute coffee project i know there are a lot hear me out so jp and i have this local cafe that we tend to frequent we generally go there once a week possibly before or after we've done the weekly grocery shop we didn't go this week because this week was pretty hectic and i didn't go shopping with him so that cafe it's a family run cafe so it's a small one when i say family run i mean the dad the mom the daughter and possibly like either the other guy is the fiance or is the brother i'm not quite sure and i was a bit shy to ask and they have quite a few framed posters on their wall and they do bubble teas and all that so their decors are quite cute and they have the bubble tea what do you call it plushy toy kind of thing so because their cafe is so nice uh, I kind of want to stitch something for them and I hope to find a project that will suit their whole design for the cafe as well so it has to be somewhat cute but I also don't want American coffees the because it will include things that Australians don't drink and it's not quite relevant Ooh, what else so i was browsing etsy i found some kits that were quite nice but i i'm still not 100 percent sure on that so there's one i don't remember the name but there's one with possibly the coffee grinder with some coffee beans and maybe like a mug a cool mug that says it's coffee o'clock and there are two owls it's cute, but then when I showed it to JP, JP was like, the owls might be a bit weird. Like, there is no reason why the owls should be there. And I also saw... What is it called? I think it's from Lettuce Stitch. I don't remember what it's... Maybe it's like Coffee Time or something. But it's like bagels and coffees. And whatnot and it says every day is better with coffee or whatever it says I mean I, I will show the pictures here as I talk so that one that one's nice but I just feel like the design is so simple it feels a bit silly to pay for it uh, th this might be just me being stingy anyways um what else and then I also saw some coffee designs from Soda Stitches who, sorry, not who, that I want to try. So I do want to try designs from Soda Stitches, but their designs tend to be like too cute, too cute for practicality reasons for me to stitch. As in, I stitch them and I can't display them because they're too kitty. But this could be a very good opportunity for them to stitch, to at least experience their charting. There is one that's almost like a coffee shop place with a girl in it, but there's only a girl. I feel like it's excluding all the, all the males working in that shop. And there's also, I think just a simple, like a, almost like a sampler is that what you call it so different coffees there are like three different sections and they're all coffee related things that one's probably most appropriate but it's quite big and it's not as cute as in it's a bit on the serious side compared to some of the other designs i mentioned 
and there's also a coffee village maybe so it's like coffee or cake with little cutesy figurines next to it that could be nice and i'm asking for your help for suggestions do you know anything else that would i guess fit the requirements i need so not too big a bit more intricate and on the cute side and also be relevant there are no weird elements or unnecessary elements on the project if you know what i mean so i need to find this perfect one and then i'll stitch it and gift it to them i hope they'll like it but yeah right now i'm still in the searching phase and that's enough rambling and with the spring will come i want to keep it out until i hit 10 percent, which shouldn't be too far off so once i hit 10 percent, i will swap it with the countryside again and hopefully finish the first column which will be six pages the first six pages and then after that's done i'll swap it back to spring will come so that's my plan for these two large projects for now and i don't know whether you've noticed so the way i rolled this one it's like rolling inward but i think by accident i saw a video before related to the quantum frame with the sidebar they actually roll it outward and then that explains why this fabric bit is so tight and i think once i finish the 10 percent put it back i mean put it back into the dust bag and then take it out again i will change the direction of its rolling because right now i really can't be bothered changing it so i'll just leave it as it is oh jesus okay and yeah i have mentioned before as well i want to start more things i i was being very strict on myself because i wanted to be really realistic with my hobby cross stitch i want to finish things sort of on schedule without wasting too much time not wasting but i guess spread out my attention on too many projects so that i don't finish anything by the end but i feel like that's a bit too straining in a way because i'm really controlling myself too much i want to be a bit more liberating right now well, once the wedding sample is done, obviously, I want to, I guess, cap my total whip at 10. Depending on how I feel, it could be, you know, on the lower end of 10, so like four or five eventually. But if it's, you know, at like nine or 10, I shouldn't be too stressed about it. But that just means when the mood is calling i could easily pick out which one i want to do at the time so that means i will be able to start a few more things and what else yeah so mostly what i have in my collection right now it's big they tend to be big but i have acquired a couple smaller things so i do intend to start these ones so these ones are what i'm sure of to start am i making sense i am sure to start these ones for sure at this stage i will be starting let us stitch or let i stitch Paris in, Paris in flowers. 
So that will kick off my whole plan of stitching for every place JP and I have been to together. And this will be Paris with the Eiffel Tower there. And it's a big one as well, so I'm just gonna start it and take my time completing it. And this was gifted to me by the friend who is about to get married as well. I think last year as my birthday present. So I will definitely be starting this at some point. And this one, the only mirabilia I have, Stargazer. I want to start this one too. And I've got the fabric for it already. I just haven't kitted it up. Possibly, I need to do some color converting, especially for the hair. I was red haired for a while, especially around the time when I got married, like five years ago. So I might convert the hair to a red hair. And I haven't decided whether I want to change the color scheme of the dress yet. Mm, the only thing is if I do need to convert the dress then I have to convert the ribbon. It will be a whole lot of converting work and that time could easily be used to stitch. See my dilemma? I, I don't know. But I will definitely be starting this one at some point. And as Christmas is coming, once the wedding sampler is done, I will be doing this. I've never stitched things like this. It's kind of like a decoration sort of thing. This was, I guess, a gift of purchase. When I purchased some stuff from someone on Aussie Cross Stitch Stash Unload. Like, I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't notified that I was going to get given some other things. But yeah, this was a pleasant surprise and... I wouldn't mind stitching some of the little gloves <laughs> as Christmas decorations. And I've got more, whatever they are. Oh, and I've also got these two small things. I might do them in between the big ones. So this one is a scissor key. It's like a little gift from my mother-in-law for one Christmas, possibly two years ago, I can't quite remember. And this one I purchased before, it's just the bookmarks. It should be quite small, but I've heard some people saying this is not as easy as it seems. It also has the, the top bit there. Um, so yeah, and top of that, there's going to be the bunny as well. So let's count my whip. The countryside, spring will come. A good tyke. I haven't forgotten a good tyke. I will be going back to stitching it at some point. And I haven't forgotten to color convert the fawn greyhound to the black one and um yeah i'm stitching it for amy who has passed away sadly in feb this year so that's three and victorian elegance that's four coffee break that's five so once wedding sample is done i will have five old whips and then there's the bunny, so that's six. Uh, Paris in flowers, seven. Plus some of the other things. Yeah, so it will be below ten. For sure. So that's, I guess, my plan for now. And where am I up to? I'm up to an hour. Yeah, see, I just knew this was going to be a long video, especially with all the <laughs> babbling and not not quite sure what I'm about to do next and all that. Let me... So if you are here just for stitching related things, 
this is the end of the video and hopefully I will be still on time for my October stitching update and that should be that should be quite exciting too and hopefully by that time I will have received my mermaid chatelaine stuff and show you guys oh yes there's that project I want to start as well oh anyways it will be harder than I thought to cap it at 10 but it will be capped at 10 that's for sure if you are only here for the stitching I will bid you goodbye and hope you come back for my stitching update for the month of October see ya well now I will be talking about my life update as uh, it's been two months since I properly talked to you guys a lot has happened as you would have gathered first of all I did change my hair I don't think you can quite tell but this is like a dark purple and I literally did it yesterday not because I was in anticipation of making this video but because I was gonna be a bridesmaid the week after so I just wanted to make sure my hair's somewhat nice the bridesmaids dress will be in like a pink like a peachy pink color it's not quite lilac but you know so I just wanted to dye my hair purple I was hoping to have a lighter purple but I was also quite practical about it I knew it wasn't gonna be it very light because of my natural hair color and here it is quite dark it's quite purple in the sun but with artificial lighting it's not quite as noticeable and I didn't really curl my hair permanently that's just like the blow wave that they did and technically I should have washed it off maybe today or tomorrow but I don't want to do that because I don't want to wash my hair or having to I don't want to be forced to wash my hair one day before the wedding because I have heard that if you do that the hair is too smooth and it's really hard to style it so I will try to hold off hair washing until maybe like a Wednesday so then by the time it's Saturday, the hair is not too greasy, but still like have a bit of oil so the makeup artist can style my hair. Am I making sense? I feel like I'm not, I'm not very good at talking today. So that's the hair situation. I did get the hair shaped a little around my face and I haven't been able to do this for a long time because as I've mentioned before I was previously working in a compounding setting where you have to gown up and put your head in a hairnet and all that to go into the facility because like every room there's a different grade and the higher the grade the less particles you can bring in so everything is tightly controlled and there's no point having cool hair because after being in hairnet for like eight hours it's gonna look really crap anyways but i just changed my job it's still in the same place but i just just like a different job it's more of a desk job now maybe like two and a half to three weeks ago so mid mid september ish and yeah i just decided to do some fancy things with my hair because i can now and the job hours are a bit different as well it's so before i was doing 2 p.m to 10 p.m now it's 12 p.m to 8 p.m and that's why i said I just couldn't have as much stitching time at night and it felt like I don't stitch as much it's partially because in the morning I still couldn't get up as early as I'd like so I just 
didn't have as much time before work to stitch. And then my stitching time is fully relying on after work. And because we also need to go to bed early now, pretty much most, the most I can stitch on a weekday is one and a half hours. I do want to change that situation by getting up earlier, but I just still have to change or like con convert my bed pattern to slightly earlier. So yeah, I'm not quite adjusted to the new pattern yet, but I will get there. What else? Oh yes, yeah, so JP just, not just celebrated, but JP celebrated his 30th birthday last month and I actually did make a birthday vlog. We had a really nice time. We took maybe two extra days, two to three extra days off and around his birthday we went to a nice restaurant. I think I cooked one day as well and we also tried the VR, the virtual reality thing for the first time which was quite fun. We are planning to go back there at some point again with maybe with some friends. So yeah, overall it was a very nice birthday celebration. It was very chill and if you're interested, yeah, just go check that vlog out. It's called Cross Stitch and Donnie, but just called birthday vlog I think. And I've talked about job change. Oh well, yeah, we we actually attended a friend's wedding uh, mid was it mid mid September something like that. So it it wasn't quite of an impromptu wedding, but we got told literally two months before, two and a half months before. So it was a bit of a surprise. It was nice. So this friend got married or planned the wedding quite hurriedly because she got pregnant. She originally wanted to have a proper wedding in Korea, but because she would be a mom then, she decided to just have a wedding when her belly was not as big, you know? And yeah, it was quite a sweet wedding. So they did the ceremony in the old treasury building. I've never been there before. It was a very old fashioned, quite nice building. Unfortunately, when we went that day, it had some repair work done on the outside. So you can see a lot of scaffolding covering one third of the building. And then the reception was done in one of those on the fancier side, Asian restaurant. It's a Thai restaurant and it's like a banquet thing. Unfortunately, they didn't. So there were two levels. The bottom level was just for normal walk-ins or booking for individual customers. And up there you have a bar and a function if you do have one and obviously we were at the function side but the music still pumping for people drinking at the bar area on the other side same floor and obviously it's also for people downstairs too so when they were trying to make speech and there were quite a few speeches i couldn't hear anything so that was quite awkward so for 10 15 minutes jp and i and a lot of the people that were sitting next to me were literally like, what do you say? What do you say? Uh -huh. But we were just like getting so bored. So that bit wasn't quite nice, but I think it's out of their control. So overall, it's a very nice wedding. And um, yeah, so my friend is Korean and the husband now is Malaysian. So that's quite cute. They look quite cute together. And yeah, so that's one weekend and literally the weekend after, which was the weekend before actually. So the 23rd, 24th of September, we had a girl's trip to Sorrento. 
in Victoria. And it was just a one night thing. So, I mean, it was nice when we got there, but before every, <sighs> the whole planning was literally kind of like a burden to me because when the idea was brought out, everyone else was way more excited than me. But you know, sometimes in your friend group, some people can just seem enthusiastic in general, but they don't want to do anything. So no one was very proactive in terms of planning. And it was the friend who is about to get married that was, I guess, putting up all these ideas and everyone else was answering very slowly. And she got really upset. So she complained to me in private. How come no one, no one wanted to, you know, do this thing and it would be so nice. It would be before my wedding. I just want to make sure I have some girl time before I'm you know, fully married. And I was like, okay. So then I ended up planning, booking the accommodation, checking vehicles, all that. So I ended up driving everyone there and back and I hate driving first of all but my car probably had the most boot space and by the end I was really exhausted on Sunday so we went there on Saturday and we came back on Sunday and we stayed a night at like a three bedroom place the place was nice but it's quite expensive for one night and we cooked for dinner I might insert some pictures here if you're interested. And I cooked most of the things. So there was one girl dealing with the desserts. When I said desserts, I meant like fruits and cutting up cakes and all that. And I made steaks. I cooked some vegetables. What else did I do? I think that's pretty much all I did. Yeah, and then another girl did this chicken, oven chicken dish. It was really good. It was a good dinner. And we had brunch somewhere else as well in Porsi. I should I link should I link the restaurant's names? I don't know. I'm not sure whether people will be interested or how many people from Victoria that are watching this video. But maybe if I have some pictures posted, I will of food of a cafe, I will put the cafe name next to it um so yeah i mean it's a nice girls trip but i don't know whether i want to do it again i'm just so exhausted on sunday i couldn't help but fall asleep so i had a nap so the whole rest of the sunday i was barely functioning <laughs> i think it's aging also not experienced in driving long distance it wasn't that long distance and just yeah, I guess too much socializing, I get really, really, really drained. And that weekend was supposed to be a four day long, extra long weekend with um, the Queen's Memorial Day, morning day or whatever you call it. The AFL Grand Final Day in Victoria. So that's the Thursday, Friday and Saturday, Sunday. But I had a relaxing time on Thursday. But Friday, we spent all day cleaning the house in anticipation of people coming on Saturday. So the girls came to my house. We got together and everyone got into my car and we drove. And that's my long weekend. It was very exhausting. And, and before I made this video earlier this morning, I was in a meeting with some of the Greyhound safety net committee members. We were just discussing how to create more social media presence to, I guess, get more attention and raise awareness of Greyhound adoption. So pretty much get more foster carers and adopters to get more doggies in to people's homes 
And so, yeah, now I'm part of the Greyhound Safety Net adoption team. Um, that's quite exciting. I put my hand up. So I've been wanting to help for a while, but I know we don't really have the capacity right now to help fostering because the house is not big enough really for three dogs to run around and we're both working full time. We wouldn't be able to keep an eye on the dogs. So I just wanted to make sure there's something I am able to help with. And then I noticed they actually needed people to do the social media part. And I thought, oh, maybe I could help with that. At least I'm a bit more in line with, you know, Instagram, Facebook and all that. I mean, I even have this channel. I don't think they need YouTube videos, but if they do need video editing, I can do a little bit. So yeah, we had this meeting, we had some ideas going around. The meeting wasn't as productive as I'd hoped, but I, I'm, I'm, I think some ideas got across. And so I'm still waiting for more instructions in terms of like what they expect and like how it's gonna work. But yeah, I think I will be hopefully helping more people to get to know greyhounds and that in turn will change not change but push more people to accept greyhounds and adopt greyhounds and i think that's that's a very cool thing for now i don't know how much work will go into it like what i said i don't quite know the workload yet but they're hoping to just involve maybe a couple hours every week. I think I can do that, especially with my new hours. Oh, I didn't really say with a new job, I am not expected to work on the weekends anymore. And there's barely overtime. And I barely work public holidays unless, you know, everyone has to. And there's no encore. So in terms of workload, it's less than before. So I earn less, but I'm also not as tired. Water drinking. What else? Mm. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, I've got that wedding to attend to next week. And yes, I am a bridesmaid and it will be a very full-on day. So I need to get to her house, which is in literally the other side of Melbourne, at 9.30. And after this video, I might have to try on the bridesmaid's dress just to make sure it fits. I just got it tailored, as in chopped, trimmed, hemmed, whatever the word is. Hemmed, maybe, because it was too long. And I was supposed to be doing more exercise to make sure I'm a bit more toned than before. But for one reason or the other, it didn't really happen. So I'm hoping the dress will still fit. Or if it doesn't quite fit right, it's not too tight. So I'll do that after the video. And yeah, like what I said before, it's a boat wedding. And... I've never, I mean, I. it's not my preference to be on a boat if I can help it because I do get motion sickness and that goes to in a vehicle, on a boat. And I was okay when we were in Darwin on that sunset cruise because the water was so peaceful. But when I stood up, I could still feel a bit of dizziness and with the Melbourne weather there would definitely be wind I don't know how would how I would react on the boat and there's no going back once I'm on it so I, I'm actually quite nervous and um, the other bridesmaids got seasickness too I think so she's going to bring some medicines 
but yeah i don't i don't know what's gonna happen so that's not something i'll be looking forward to but hopefully everything goes well and then what else then i've got my six months pelvic ultrasound checkup so it's actually more than six months since i did my keyhole surgery to remove some cysts some very big cysts and yeah i still need to do the checkup and hopefully they don't find any new cysts otherwise there are consequences and later two weeks later so 15th of october i actually talked to a person who was in need of someone to look after the dog for a night a greyhound as well because they were going away and yeah it's it's gonna be fun there will be three dogs running around in the house it's also a way for us to test the waters in terms of fostering i mean the actual fostering process will be a lot more different than looking after someone's like fully house trained dog but still i would at least know what it would be like to have three dogs in the house and it's so the dog will be a um, i think it will be a petite girl and i was told she's quite well behaved and pretty like quiet in the house so we'll see and it's gonna be saturday to sunday so that weekend's going to be interesting i still have to check some details with her just to make sure she is coming and what time and all that but yeah should be fun what else oh and um towards the end of the month it will be my birthday and jp and my fifth wedding anniversary we have booked a fancy restaurant for my birthday it's an asian restaurant it's sort of like fine dining i don't have much experience in fine dining so when i saw the price i was like Ugh. but the food should be good i heard from my colleague that the food is good it's just a bit more expensive so if everything goes oh whatever my experience might be i will let you guys know and you know, we were just talking about like what we might do for the 50th anniversary we might just go to a restaurant nearby just to have some good food and just enjoy time together um yeah the actual wedding anniversary is gonna be on a friday i want to see whether i could get off work early to have dinner with jp and then we just enjoy the weekend together and do some stitching <laughs> and he can paint and whatnot as well and yeah that's all the life update and it's been one and a half hours as well so i haven't made such a long video for a long time and i know i have rambled a lot and rocket is whining so i better wrap this up i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have stayed this far um and i also hope my next video will be on time and i have plenty of progress to show you and we will probably take advantage of this sunny day and walk the dogs in the sun oh yes so victoria has gone to daylight saving again now we're one hour ahead so yeah right now it's 3 48 is it yeah 3 48 in the afternoon and yeah the dog are whining because they want food they want walk they want pats and all that so yeah, hope you have a wonderful day, enjoy your stitching, and you have enjoyed me rambling. And that's enough from me. I think you should do something else, watch someone else's video. 
and get some water or something. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.